Thank you very much. Okay, so this is going to be a story about um, a bunch of vulnerabilities, um, and I also call it like how to make a talk in three hours and 35 minutes. That's why I'm late, by the way. So I got the request to like jump in, and I had this idea about doing this talk, and I've had it for quite some time, and I thought this was a good place to do it. My name is uh, Franz Rosen. I um, blog on our lab's blog, I broke Let's Encrypt once, I wrote about subdomain takeovers and Donald Trump got hacked. Um, I won a boxing belt once, and the coolest thing is, I was name dropped in Whitey Cracker's Green Hat song, so you should listen to that one. Uh, anyway, this story begins in 2016. I read a blog post about, uh, from a guy called Peter Atkins. And he wrote, writes about the remote code execution on signout.live.com, sign which is an um, endpoint for Microsoft. The interesting with this blog post is basically he goes through a specific CMS. And this CMS is called Adobe Experience Manager, or AEM. And the way he actually got the remote code execution basically was due to a vulnerability called CV 2016-0957. It doesn't have a name or a logo or anything, uh, but he actually calls it the world's lamest RC. And it kind of makes sense. Before he talks about how he actually got the RC on, on this Microsoft endpoint, he goes around and explains what is AEM. And I'm going to run through it a bit uh, similar to what he did. Basically, he talks about this OSGI framework, which is like open services, um, um, uh, G is something I don't remember, but it's open services, blah, blah, uh, framework, graph framework. Or, um, and the thing is with this is that it's very nice if you think about like modeler things. It's not that nice if you think about Adobe, <laughs> because the thing is Adobe has put like their magic glue into using these open source services, like Sling is open source, they have some CRX things and the repository is like, um, a JCR uh, repository, and, and um, what Adobe did here was like a black magic glue. And that turns out to be pretty bad. Uh, and the thing is, AEM is an enterprise software. So the whole, like, the whole reason why consultants should use this is that they can charge a lot of money. So basically, this is the stuff where your consultant, where, what you pay your consultants for actually doing. This is all, like, all the customizations they do for AEM. And all this shit is what nobody is updating. So that's my version of this explanation, at least. So let's go through like, how AEM actually works. AEM is divided into three groups. Uh, being an author, you're basically on this left side, and you publish data into publisher nodes. And these publisher nodes are um, basically using dispatchers, or basically people are reaching the dispatcher when they go to the website. So this is like HTTP server module. Like this is connected to your web server. And this part is basically a reverse proxy in between. So you have a filter in there, in this reverse proxy, basically trying to filter out bad things and good things. Good things being a real article that was published, bad things being other, other shit that we'll, we'll see later. So for example, pages, metadata, and content is in the publisher nodes. But there's a bunch of admin tools in this one as well. And the thing is, you should not have access to this part, and you should not have access to this part. The thing is, how you create pages in this. Basically, you have the author, and the author actually creates new pages uh, in the repository. He publishes them, they go into the publisher nodes, and basically, the dispatcher serves the content, like really easy. However, when you access the content, you go the reverse. You access the content through the dispatcher, you get the URL, it goes through the filter, which is unbreakable. <laughs> like, you can't do anything. It's like no, no idea to even test that filter at all. And then, if all is OK, you can serve the content from the publisher node. And the thing is, the CVE 2016-0957, or like, I'm two years old, but um, I'm inside an enterprise, and nobody dares to upgrade me. Um, this bug basically consisted of this dispatcher, this filter, this unbreakable filter, Looked like this. Is there anyone that sees problems with this? I can tell you what it does. Basically, the first rules says deny everything 
accept if, if there's stuff in the content directory. However, if you have something that ends with .css or .gif in this case, we're going to allow it into the publisher node. The bug is here, like here, like really there. Like it's that, there it is. Or I don't know how many, but it's like, OK, sorry. OK, so the bypass of this is basically going into like burp or whatever in your proxy and like modify HTTP 1.1 to question mark CSS. What happens then is that you go to, oh, sorry, play. Okay, this clicker. Cliffhanger. You go to the dispatcher node, you get the URL question mark dot CSS. And every time it's okay time for the filter. <laughs> that's like, oh, that's fine. Go to the publisher node and you're just going to serve whatever you want. So enter the publish nodes. What can we find there? What Peter talks about in his blog post, there's some fun endpoints in his blog. So basically, he has one called disk usage. This disk usage basically lists your directory. It's a file listing of, all, of your whole repository. You can just go to this question mark.css and you'll see it. It's like, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, there's also one of my favorites. <laughs> it's called proxy. And you just provide a URL and it will just serve the content from the server. So this is like SSRF per design. And you will serve the example.com. It's very, very, very nice if you want to surf into their internal network, uh, being in these enterprises. And, uh, but there's more than he actually blogged about. So one of the like, common things when you're using AEM that you now can reach due to these filters are something called the CRX Explorer. Literally, you can go to one of these enterprise websites and go to this one, and you're like, oh, this is the file listing of this website. Like, it's ridiculous. And um, there's other things. The CRX Explorer, which is like more detailed, and you can actually open the content of every, every object inside this repository. And remember, this repository and this access is anonymous access. This means that you basically have the same sort of credential being inside their internal network going to the, to the AEM Explorer internally. So that means they still have like a hierarchy of access rights. But them thinking that nobody inside this office will actually do something bad, these access rights seems to be like anonymous access is always read all, which is terrible. Uh, but there are worse uh, scenarios. Like one other thing is the explorer search. This is awesome. Like if you want to look at the data they have and search for it, you can just go nuts and like search all over the place. They also have something called the Content, content Repository uh, Extreme, <laughs> which is a terrible name. Uh, they also have like file upload, like if you want to upload zip files and it's going to extract them and do stuff. This one was actually vulnerable before, so you could unpack stuff and overwrite other files. It was like the, um, what, was, what was the vulnerability called? Zip, um, uh, zip, zip slip or whatever. Like, like this was like similar vulnerabilities to this zip unpacker. And this was unauthenticated going to this one, bypassing with this question mark CSS, uploading zip files. And after it uploads the zip files, it unpacks it. It reads the XML files inside the zip file. Like, do you hear how bad this is? Uh, and then it says, no, you're not logged in. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like, but you're all, you poked at everything I uploaded. Uh, it also has something called a namespace editor. This namespace editor is, is not that, like, I actually don't know what it does, but it's on, a, on, on unauthenticated editing. Like, you can edit everything and it will just save there and be there. My guess is if you rebuild the site and you modify these ones, shit will break. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. It all, also has something called a query builder. The query builder is not related to this CRX admin endpoints. So this one you can find out in the wild on a website that doesn't even have the, the CRX or, or the consoles exposed. So this one is super is simple. It's a JSON REST API to query all the files and data on their web server, which is nice. Like you can search and you will just get the data. Here's the horse guy again. Uh, but anyway, so what I did for a customer was basically, this was back in the days when Flash is cool, like Chrome disallowed Flash now, so I'm super sad. I love Flash. 
for, to breaking it. So what I did, like for a customer, I looked for like SVF files, and what it does is basically lists all the core Flash files. It's Adobe, right? They love Flash. <laughs> so obviously, this like this application being a patchwork of like hundreds of different open source things plus Adobe has a bunch of Flash files. So I submitted a bunch of bugs to this company. Um, and also, here's a bunch of payloads uh, for all the Flash files um, there is in that um, um, little enterprise application. It's terrible. It's really terrible. And, and all of these are like, you see the SFV, SVF upload uh, F9? That one is since 2003. <laughs> so it's like, it's, a, it's just a mishmash of like old things, crappy things, flash files. What was interesting when I started looking at some of these customers is that some of them also allow anonymous access to write content. What was interesting was also that one of the customers that I saw had that one also was already breached. However, <laughs> the person that breached this, he basically like thought it was PHP. So he started creating like PHP files in this Java virtual machine. Uh, which is like PHP info. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you can do so much worse than trying to run a PHP code. Like, you already have access to write whatever you want on this website, and you decide to run PHP on it. <laughs> like, that's how clueless people trying to do this is. But Peter mentioned RCE in his blog post. And the RCE was basically accessing something else unrelated to the endpoints I showed you because there's an endpoint called system slash console. And when you go to that one, you got like a password prompt. What Peter did, <laughs> which is a very smart move, was to try some credentials for this thing. If you're able to actually reach this endpoint, you will see this type of, of endpoint behind it. And if you get to this endpoint, you can basically go and just install code. What Peter did was admin admin, and he got it. <laughs> because that's the default credentials. So he reported this to Microsoft, of course. He reported it to Adobe. Adobe created this CVE for him, which was nice. They also issued a patch to this. And you would think they removed the filter, right? Woohoo! Yes! Like, no, no, they didn't. Um, they modified the filter. But the problem is, it didn't fix anything. So what's the problem? Well, they issued the update as a low severity, <laughs> which is terrible. The priority of this is like, no way we're going to issue an update cycle for this. Because the second problem of AEM, a minor update of AEM looks like this. <laughs> and this? This is money. <laughs> so prioritizing a low severity bug, doing this flow with a consultant firm, which are the ones basically creating these AEM websites, not going to happen. So the in real life version of companies patching this bug, like I tried to find a WAF emoji. This is hilarious though. If you Google WAF emoji, this shows up. <laughs> This is exactly what a WAF emoji should look like. Because this is what you see, basically. You like, go to this proxy and like, you know, you're forbidden. What they did, because there's so many endpoints to this, was that they like, okay, question mark dot CSS. Like, we're going to blacklist that one. <laughs> and then, then you go and like, okay, dot JS then. <laughs> and you're like, you're in again. Also, another guy, uh, yesterday when I announced that I was doing this talk, there was another guy like, oh, do you know my bypass? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, There's a, this is a new bypass. And I'm like, does Adobe know? <laughs> like, I don't want to expose something. He's like, yeah, they, they don't really care. They're, they have this patch update since 2016. Nobody touches that patch update, but it's still over there. Like, this is terrible. Like, as soon as, if you actually are digging into this, like online, you will just like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is terrible. Why haven't there been more breaches than, than it already is? So I'm trying to like enlighten people, like, 
fix this. Shut down your website, build a new one, pay $200 million, pay a new one, whatever. Like, I don't care. So the passive aggressive sysadmin in this case was a customer using AEM. They created drugs, like legit drugs, like legal drugs. And they had a bunch of money, like a, like a billion dollar international, billion dollar company. And suddenly I get like, uh, email from HackerOne saying like, here's a private invite for like, we make drugs. Can you please look at like our shit and see if it, um, it's bad or not? I go to this website and I look in the source, like you do, right? So you go and I see these signs, the content, the DAM and the ETC designs. These are indications that this is an AEM. Like that's a, one of the first indications. You can basically go to the start, like, start page and like, okay, it's AEM. And yeah, I was right. I went to the CRX, I saw the CRX, I went to the CRX DE, uh, which is the other one. I went to the like, you could also rebuild things, profile things, and, and all this is like unauthenticated using this CSS bypass. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do what Peter did. I'm gonna go in and I'm like, admin, admin, boom, RC. So I went to this one and I entered admin, admin, like, nope. That didn't work. And I'm like, damn, that would have been nice. But anyway, like you could still reach a bunch of shit. You can edit it. You can do uh, bad things with it. So I go there. I report a bug saying like, this is a misconfiguration. You should probably fix this. But after that, I felt maybe I should like look more into what the content really is. Like I've, I, I've seen some instances before regarding this, but I hadn't really like looked in detail what, what, what they were all about. So I started searching, and I thought to myself, like, maybe I could find something, maybe they're connecting to an API, maybe they have, like, references to an SSO implementation or whatever in their content. So I started searching for, like, manager, console, admin, password, and stuff. And suddenly, in the repository, there's an object called Apache Felix, which is everything is based upon Felix, web console internal servlet, <laughs> oskimanager.config. <laughs> I wonder what this is. I clicked on it, and then there's like a binary thing link on it. And I'm like, okay, I could probably download something. I download it, and I see this. Uh, <laughs> so basically, you go to this website URL on this website, and you see a hashed password, a SHA-256, you see that this is the manager root uh, password, and the user is admin. And I saw this, and I'm like, okay, this is bad enough, right? <laughs> but I, 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 I really want to know what the password is. Does anyone recognize the password? No. <laughs> um, so what I did was basically I converted it uh, into um, like hex. Uh, so I got like a hex value, because hashcat as you might know, uh, uses these um, hashes instead for SHA-256. I did this, and I'm actually going to do it live. <laughs> I'm going to demo it for you. So am I the first one doing uh, Hashcat live? <laughs> it's a terrible idea. We'll see. Oof. OK. I'm going to see if I have. Yeah. Okay, so I have the hash. What? Oh, good. Then you missed, I had a spoiler alert there. Wow, amazing. Here we go. Okay. This is exciting. First hash cut. Okay. Are you ready? Let's go. Boom! We got it. Here it is. Best password ever. <laughs> this is a multi-million dollar company all over the world. Their dot-com website has admin and I hate you all. <laughs> and this, <laughs> this, this is not a joke. Yeah, so it took two seconds. <laughs> So I guess like this, this talk will probably manage to have that in the talk. I hate you all. So I went to the system console and like probably outdated password, right? This was, I think it was like two years old also. It wasn't that, 
that knew when I, when I found it. I entered admin and I hate you all. <laughs> so what could have happened? Like, yeah, I got in. <laughs> I'm in and the first thing I see is like install update packages. Like, okay, this is urgent. Like one of my few urgent reports. This was on a Saturday. And uh, in the report, I wrote to them, this is actually the working password for all your sites. <laughs> Because they, they had like, because they were multinational, they had like 15 Adobe Experience Managers separate from each other, having I hate you all as the password. And I love my mitigation advice to them, like, please, like, change it to a much more complicated one than this one. So the thing is, this is a special case, of course. Like, this object is not supposed to be inside this console. One of the reasons why this object was in there from the first place was a migration between different versions of AEM. And they moved the location of the config. This config turned out to be saved for some reason by backup or, or regression or whatever. So this one kept there. I haven't seen this object all over the place. It's not a zero day exposing this object. I talk with Adobe and they're like, no, there's, they are doing it wrong. <laughs> like, we, we are safe. And I'm like, isn't the problem that people like exposes this because you have a low severity of your CV? And they're like, no, I mean, it's, it's basically low. And I'm like, no, it's not low. Like, look at what you can do with this. Look, at this is a perfect tool to actually reach out and do other worse things. Like, you don't expect people to watch your repository like that. So the thing is, there's a bunch of companies using this. Uh, there's some public bug bounty programs. I will just announce them to you. Like, here's some public programs that you can take a look at. All of them are using AEM. Uh, the other one is like, a, um, I don't know the word for it, but it's like an uh, image game. You can try to think about who, who they are. Thank you very much.